um, in 2015, um, in the early drive for getting cheap nursery plants, I got this uh, Cretanaster um, shrub and uh, played around with it over successive years. It's had different shapes, different pots, and hopefully now you're seeing probably somewhere over there-ish um, different images of, the, of this tree as it's developed over the years. Um, but there's always a risk, and one of those risks is when you do a repot into uh, a more adventurous pot, which I'll show you this one closer up in a second, you can have some uh, unexpected results. Yeah, and, and looking closely, again, this is in a, a Dawn, Dawn Isaac ceramic bark scrape primitive. Um, and I, I was just really desperate to try and use this pot. Um, and I thought this Cotonasta would, uh, would be perfect for it. Um, it had a small, tight, compact root system. And I didn't think there'd be any problem with it at all. Lovely, lovely pink flowers are starting to come out. And just for those of you who watched the, uh, the Easter special with, uh, with my uh, delightful children, we're starting to see just some budding, budding um, flowers coming out on their cotton asters. So it looks like they all survived the, uh, the process of, uh, of them manhandling them, or, or they them manhandling, no you can't, they them manhandling, they them handling them. I don't know how you say that phrase in this current way. But what I'm saying here is, when I did the root prune, I knew that I had to try and jam a few extra roots in places that didn't really want to take them. In other words, this pot was a lot shallower than it originally was in. And this is where you'll find that different parts of tree, like azalea, have actually their own root clumps. Um, so this particular branch, the roots are actually down over here. And this was a very shallow part of the pot, and I know that I chopped quite heavily to get the tree in. What I didn't realize, is that the root I chopped basically the roots that fed this branch. So the successive this entire this year and last year, um, it was well last year it was dying off slowly. So this is one of those sad times when you thank it for all its hard work. Um, you look at it and you realise that the tree is going to change where it's going. And I could have this this rough stump, so we'll see how that might look. Uh, let's first of all just, you can see there, dead. So that's a goner. Um, and I may well see what happens if I can just try and deadwood it a bit. The only trouble with deadwooding stuff like this is they rot. Um, so I can put some preservative on it. But tell the wood's pretty pretty damp and wet and I know people have these ginning ginning tweezers or pliers um, but I'm not particularly expert at that yet as you probably just saw see there we go so this is the the new the new way it looks and clearly what we've now got is uh, a bit of a mismatch with the pot but what I can do to, overcom to compensate that is this branch here, I'm going to let run. And I might let something down here run, and so we'll fill in that as a, as a single trunk. Well, still a twin trunk there. So that's where now I've got developed. So this, I wouldn't, this normally I'd sort of, it's, this is um, almost like hedge pruning with these things. Um, it's clip and grow. Uh, and you'll, see, you'll probably see me use some cut and aster later in the year. But this side, I'll just let go right out. We'll see how it develops. So yeah, so that's uh, a cotton aster post bad uh, bad repot. Well, it wasn't a bad repot. I knew there was a risk with it anyway. So yeah, so there you go. Um, it's only lunchtime, so I haven't had too many drinks yet. I've only kept the uh, the Fosters in the uh, in the fridge. I've dealt with one of those. I'm going to be doing some um, trident maple. Uh, mainly, it's for cuttings, um, and I'll talk to you about what I use uh, to propagate those. It's, uh, it's a different mix. I've tried three different mixes. First thing I'm going to do is um, mix some, some sphagnum. Uh, suitable for this. I've already got a container, probably quite a lot of quite a lot of um, perlite in it. Is it perlite or mixed? I always get mixed. Yeah, is that funny? I'm having an absolute complete brain um, brain lapse. I know what this stuff is. It's, it's been making it out of perlite. There'll be a sign somewhere up on the screen saying, don't be such a dummy. We'll get some uh, 
sphagnum mixed in with this. Oh, great. And all I'm going to do with the sphagnum here, just make sure it's really so I've got more filler in it, to be honest. First year I've done it, but in this um, time when we're trying to um, <laughs> trying desperately to save a little bit of money without affecting quality, just want to see if this takes a bit further. As I say, the sphagnum was um, been uh, soaking overnight. You want it nice and damp. Water I just collect in a water butt, which is just rainwater. Right, so that's ready. So what I'm going to do now is uh, this trident that I've been growing on. It's also a good time to do cutting, so um, what we'll do is we'll have a look at this trident and, uh, and see where we get on with it. Um, the cuttings, I'll use uh, an organic rooting gel, Westland. It's only because that was the one that was in the shop at the time when I got it. Um, this time I'm going for a, it's a, it's a liquidy, a liquidy gel so I put it I try to put it into a clean container each time um, always avoid dipping straight in same with the powder because if you've got any pathogens or stuff on your cutting you're transferring it into the uh, clean gel that you use and before you know it that pathogen is going to be transferred to all your other cuttings at different stages however long you have it for um, again about the right time of the year this is all hardened off you're looking to try and take your cutting from this year's flush, um, which you can see easily here, it's from the green, nice and green there. So this is this year's and that's last year's. So cut at that point. And then key with this is don't be greedy. So remove. I'll do mate, remove the growing tip. That's what we're going for. Um, we dip it into the hormone. And the only thing I'd say is that if you're going to be doing a load of cuttings at once, then uh, have some water ready to keep that nice and damp. I'm using the same mixture that I did the air layer on, which is the combination of sphagnum and perlite. Take the cutting, dip it into the hormone, create a small hole. This year I'm only going to be doing one cutting in each of these small pots. What will happen, this will go into a humid, I don't know what they call them, garden humidifier. It's just a plastic, plastic tray with a plastic cover rather than putting a bag, but the other way you do it is you put a bag over it or if you use these to drink from cut the half off and that will sit over the top and that will create the humidity shield okay so I'll just do a load of these and see how we get on um, in the meantime I've still got to try and work out what I want to do with this um, looking in there I've got don't know if you can see but from the top just here there's two Two shoots coming out, so I may well go for those so I get branches coming out that way rather than this big clunky one here. I'll take that off there. Now, it also I've also had a lot of success with um, what we call sort of the semi hardwood cuttings. Um, and again, do the same process. Obviously the other thing to be very, very aware of is if you've got bugs or anything on them, you want to wash those off first, otherwise all you're going to do is you're going to give the uh, bugs a nice, ripe environment to, uh, to feed on. So, and I will just keep going around. I'll take some harder ones as well because the main one you want to look at is this here. We've got last year's growth as well on here and on here. I'm going to try almost clip and grow on this. I don't want to wire this, so I'm going to go back to the best, the best potential buds. There's a bud here that's shooting that way, which will 
create some interesting direction. So let's just see what that does. So I'm going to cut just above it. On this one, hardwood. Well, I say hard, I think semi. I'll cut just at the point of a junction there. And so a lot of the time I say these can be taken in the um, autumn time when the leaves have gone. But I'm a great one for just trying whenever. It's amazing the success you get at different times of the year. Granted you get more success this time of the year. Um, I don't, I've never had much success with the, um, the hardwood cuttings in the, uh, in the autumn. Don't know why. And as I say, we all know how hard it is to get hold of Trident Maples, so my advice if you've got one um, and, you're, um, and you're keen to have more and you've got a bit of patience, a bit of time, concentrate on the uh, Trident Maple cuttings. Um, they do root really easily. I've got a load over different years. And then looking at this, this is all dyed here. Really hasn't done well. So I'm going to cut it back to, it might be a bud there. That's all dead. But there's green there, so hopefully this will cause some, I mean, to say these back bud quite profusely. So hopefully we'll get some back budding going on. Uh, let's bring this back into shape. I'd say very, very disappointed. Oh, what I want is more growth out here. I'm so disappointed with the frosts, the effect the frost had. And I'm just cutting back to to two into nodes, one, two. This is what I was talking about, we get the browning. Um, I've always I've always had it with the uh, the May with the tridents. Again higher up the tree, cutting back to just first pair. It's clearly still not in its healthiest state, but thank you to the frost. It's just deciding what's going to happen with this. I want to get a lot of growth up here. Um, I could try and develop from here, but the other option is I take it all the way back. But for now, I'm just going to take the top off. And as I say, depending if I get lots of flush of growth coming from all these, that may create a new apical area up here. I can hide this mess and make that the midpoint of the tree. So get a, a layer here going out, grow that further out, and then actually have the, uh, the crown of the tree up here with this area growing out here and here, and using these as uh, different levels. Try and hide that. So yeah, so that's, that's that trident for now. Now I'm just going to take the cuttings off this thing. Um, so, from Xavier down the bottom of the garden. Uh, this is a bit about more haphazard one, but desperately need to get this done. Um, got this trident still. In fact, you know I've got about 15 other tridents, all with growth that I need to take cuttings off and, and neaten up. But because of the frost damage last year, I'm not going to go too hard on them. Um, and the, uh, the sort of humidifier thing I was talking about. It's uh, just one of these uh, little things that you get from B&Q or anywhere else. And leave it in a uh, cool, well, leave it in a sort of semi-shaded spot. You don't want it all to dry out. But uh, each morning when I come down, there's, uh, there's loads of humidity in there. Um, so it should well uh, be all right on its own for four or five weeks. And so you should get the growth starting to come out in four or five weeks' time. Don't be tempted to tug it. Um, if you are worried, you can use a little mister. Um, I've done that too, just to, to miss the leaves. But apart from that, leave it. So, from Xavier down the bottom of the garden, I'll say farewell. I'm going to go and have a bit of uh, a bit of lunch, and uh, I think I've got to watch episode seven of the Living Dead, Dead Living, Living Dead final season. Yeah.
great stuff. No worries. Cheers.